It's March here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, but regardless of where you're at in the state, there's still time to control broadleaf weeds in warm season turf grass lawns. However, there's some folks that actually enjoy the broadleaf plants as well from a perspective of their ability to feed pollinators. So let's talk about some of the thought process behind how you handle these types of areas and we'll view both sides of the story. As we take a look at this warm season turf grass area here, it's very diverse in different plant species and you can see even that it had a, quite a bit of crabgrass in it this past summer, but that froze out in the fall it produced dead tan leaves and right now we still have dormant Bermuda grass. But the plant that we see predominantly here right now is called henbit. It's a native winter annual broadleaf plant and it does produce a uh, nectaring opportunity for pollinators. We also see white clover which is an introduced perennial broadleaf species from Europe and then also a little bit of cranesbill and also wild geranium which are native uh, to this area. So let's talk about if you wanted to clean this area up of these various broadleaves and if you considered them undesirable, they would be plants then growing out of place and we'd call them weeds. And you could use one of several consumer available broadleaf weed killers called post-emergent herbicides, meaning they're applied after the emergence of the target weed, which in the case of a broadleaf post-emergent is after the germination of the broadleaf. So many of those include things like Weed Be Gone, uh, Spectricide Lawn Weed Control, Bear Advanced Lawn Weed Control. That's just a sample of three names from various products that are available out there post-emergent. Typically they'll have 2,4-D, MCPP, and Dicamba in them, but also Carfentrazone, Sulfentrazone, any of a number of different components. And usually more than one component, and that is to broaden the width of the different weed species controlled. So that's one option for cleaning up this area. Then we'd follow up with a, a fertilizer program that you could find in Fact Sheet 6420 Lawn Management in Oklahoma that would tell you about fertilization, mowing, irrigation, those types of things later on. But let's also look at this same area from a different perspective. Let's say if you enjoyed these broadleaf plants and they were actually what you wanted to be integrated into your warm season lawn, you would not consider them plants out of place. Therefore, they wouldn't be called weeds. They'd be part of the vital components of the stand. You can also approach a management program from that perspective as well. So let's say in this case though that you said the crabgrass uh, which we had last year is undesirable. You could actually take the same pre-emergent herbicides that are labeled for pre-emergent crabgrass control and once you have these desirable broadleaf components in place here, uh, a pre-emergent herbicide, whether granular or sprayable, applied over the top is not going to injure or kill these broadleaf plants. First of all, it's a pre-emergent. It's only going to act against seed, but also the broadleaf plants are produced in the nursery production trade, and these same pre-emergent herbicides are used in the culture and production of many desirable woody and herbaceous species of broadleaves. So a pre-emergent herbicide is not going to injure or kill these broadleaves here. So these would continue to flower and if you don't mow them down and if you don't spray them with a broadleaf post-emergent they're going to flower and set viable seed. That seed is going to be dormant this spring because it's a cool season perennial clover and a cool season annual broadleaf like henbit. That seed will lay dormant in the soil. Your pre-emergent applied in the spring would be effective against crabgrass germination once our soil temperatures get about 60 degrees Fahrenheit and plenty of good soil moisture. But over the course of about a four to five month period, your pre-emergent herbicides are going to be metabolized as a food source, broken down that is, by uh, microorganisms in the soil, such that when we get into the fall and early winter of later this year, they're no longer going to be active against seed. So if white clover seed that germinates in the fall is present in the soil as well as henbit seed, it's going to be unaffected by a spring applied pre-emergent. So you would actually get regeneration of the henbit, the geranium, which are both winter annuals. The white clover seed would be prevented from germinating in the spring, but not from in the fall germination. So you can actually strike against crabgrass as a summer annual with a pre-emergent program applied at this time in March and have no detrimental effect on your winter annual broadleaves if you wanted them to germinate in this fall. So you can have a very pollinator friendly lawn and you can also 
uh, approach it from the other standpoint if you considered these weeds. So timing is everything uh, with these pre-emergent herbicides and they are a great management tool but you have to use them strategically depending on what your end goal is for what you want in your lawn. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.